The ability to use mathematics is one of the most valuable life skills taught at school, yet 15 to 20 percent of the population experience mathematical learning difficulties at some point in their education. How can we identify these students, prevent difficulties, and ensure they aren't left behind? Children with mathematical learning difficulties generally demonstrate deficiencies in their numeracy skills and knowledge and mathematical concepts and procedures. These difficulties can be attributed to a plethora of reasons, including social, emotional, behavioural and biological problems, socio-cultural and environmental factors, and inappropriate or insufficient teaching. A recent argument around this learning difficulty is the need for labelling. Labelling allows for funding, assessment reports, identification and appropriate adjustments to be made to meet the needs of the student. However, it can also promote prejudice and stereotyping and the perceived benefits of labelling fail to provide teachers with pedagogical guidance and strategies to address mathematical difficulties. Graham and McCartney suggest teachers should use labels appropriately to intervene and differentiate instruction, but avoid using them to reduce and narrow the expectation of students, categorise students as failures or stream students according to ability. But why is it important to identify mathematical difficulties? Many studies have shown that children with inadequate numeracy experiences in education, prior to school and in the early years, often have difficulties in future years. Two studies found that children identified as low-performing or with mathematical difficulties did not catch up to their average performing peers over a period of time. Both studies suggest that targeted intervention with quality educational support and instruction, where conceptual knowledge, procedural knowledge and skills, factual knowledge and problem-solving skills are developed, leads to success in later years. If this early intervention is not provided, children continue to experience failure which quickly and cumulatively leads to poor self-esteem, diminished beliefs concerning self-efficacy and other harmful outcomes. But why should teachers make adjustments for students with mathematical difficulties? Legislation requires teachers to remove barriers by modifying content, teaching methods, approaches, structures and strategies to create an inclusive, supportive, quality, accessible and equitable education where all students are successful. The Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority have acknowledged that the school curriculum can contribute to students' learning difficulties and have responded by developing a high-quality curriculum that promotes excellence and equity. So what can teachers do to ensure all students become successful learners? Before making any adjustments, teachers need to identify children experiencing mathematical learning difficulties. There are a range of characteristics and signs that indicate and contribute to learning difficulties in mathematics such as distractibility, limited attention span, inadequate language comprehension, and limited vocabulary. To identify a mathematics difficulty, teachers can look for difficulties processing and representing basic numbers and numerosities, number sense deficits, poor metacognitive skills in regard to performance, deficient basic skills, slowed response time, poor fact retrieval, as well as specific difficulties commonly identified in lower and upper primary. So, what can be done next, after students who have potential mathematical learning difficulties have been identified? Traditionally, mathematical learning difficulties are identified according to the discrepancy between IQ and performance level regarding standardised measures of mathematics achievement. IQ scores are often complicated by disadvantaged backgrounds and emotional or behavioural problems. Therefore, evidence indicated by the IQ discrepancy model must be used alongside other formal and informal testing, to avoid over- and under-identification. The number knowledge test, PAT maths, and Schedule for Early Number Assessment 1 and 2 are all reliable and valuable tests that have been found to be dependable predictors of mathematical difficulties. PAT maths is useful as it tests students' skills and understanding in the six strands of the Australian mathematics curriculum – number, algebra, geometry, measurement, statistics, and probability. Teachers can also informally identify difficulties through observation to determine whether students have understood lesson content and successfully put into practice mathematical procedures. If results show students are unable to move past a concrete level of thinking and reasoning, structural apparatus and graphical representations may be introduced to move students to an abstract level. For example, if students are showing difficulties with place value, number patterns and fractions, teachers may use unifix cubes, MAB blocks, counters and shapes to improve students' understanding. To be effective, these manipulatives must be used alongside clear and explicit explanations, modelling, questioning, repetition and verbal scaffolding. Of course, students will show a range of difficulties in their results, so how can students with mathematical learning difficulties be supported to succeed? The response to intervention model for mathematics is often employed in schools to provide all students with high quality instruction through systematic evidence-based strategies. Tier 1 involves explicit instruction in number skills and age-appropriate problem solving through teaching heuristics, for example. Tier 2 is designed for students who require extra support in small groups with a focus on developing procedural fluency in number skills and problem-solving strategies. If students show a significant learning difficulty and fail to respond at this stage, they move to Tier 3, where they receive in-depth assessment for more intensive one-on-one -on -one instruction. At each tier, explicit instruction is systematically used to support students at risk for mathematical difficulties. 
This involves modelling of new concepts and skills, opportunities for guided practice, checking for understanding, providing descriptive academic feedback and the provision of independent practice for students. Rakomini and colleagues explain that language is vital to the overall comprehension of mathematical concepts, principles and procedures. If students are struggling to effectively communicate through the language of mathematics and display low fluency and proficiency with numbers, symbols, words and diagrams, they suggest teachers implement six strategies. Teachers can improve students' mathematical vocabulary and overall performance by providing informal explanations, stimulating prior knowledge by allowing students to restate content in their own words and explain new learning strategies and reasoning, providing repetition through the construction of pictures and diagrams, differentiating instruction to develop and enrich students' knowledge, revisiting terms through small group and or peer-to-peer -peer discussions permitting cooperative learning and using game-like activities. With early intervention involving the implementation of evidence-based strategies, students with mathematical learning difficulties can be empowered to succeed.